أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كلام الله جل وعلا وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد أيها المسلمون قال الله سبحانه وتعالى يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم واخشوا يوما لا يجزي والد عن ولده ولا مولود هو جاز عن والده شيئا إن وعد الله حق فلا تغرنكم الحياة الدنيا ولا يغرنكم بالله الغرور أو مسلم سفر الله سبحانه وتعالى by fulfilling the taqwa for Allah سبحانه وتعالى by adhering to his commands and the commands of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and by abstaining from all prohibitions and doing all of this as legislated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala performing all actions of worship sincerely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala according to the sunnah of our beloved prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah al-Luqman O mankind have the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, keeping his, your duties towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by fulfilling the obligation and staying away from all evil. And fear a day by preparing yourselves for that day. That's how we fear the day of a judgment, by being ready and prepared to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fear a day when no father can benefit his son. No son can benefit his father. Verily the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is true. So therefore, let not then this worldly present life deceive you, nor let the chief deceiver, the shaitan, deceive you about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ribad Allah, ayyuha al-Muslimun, ya man tarjoon al-najat, يا من ترجون رحمة الله يا من ترجون الجنة وتخافون النار تأملوا أحوالكم وتذكروا مصيركم وانظروا في أعمالكم فإنكم لم تخلقوا عبثا 
قال تعالى وما خلقت الجن والانس الا ليعبدون نعم او مسلمس يو that you want a safety for yourself in this life and in the hereafter you a muslim that he wants to be among those who are successful in this life and the hereafter you a muslim that he wants to be admitted into the paradise amongst the prophets and the truthful and the martyrs and the righteous you a muslim that he wants to save your skin from the burning fire of hell now you have to do it now you have to do it because you're not going to be able to save yourself on Yom Al-Qiyamah by running away from the hellfire. Now you're going to do it while you're still alive in this dunya by taking a time and reflect upon your, or your statement you make, your actions, your decision you make. And remember death. And remember death. And remember the day when you stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no money, no children, no family will be of any benefit except your action that you have performed in this life. Indeed, Ibad Allah, we are not created in vain for no purpose. Allah created us for the great purpose to worship Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَقَالَ غَيْرُ وَاحِدٍ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْعِلْمِ لِيَعْبُدُونَ أَيْ لِيُوَحِدُونَ فَعَلَيْنَا عباد اللَّهِ تَحْقِيقَ التَّوْحِيدَ الَّذِي هُوَ حَقُّ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْعَبِيدِ Many of the ulama of tafsir and from them, the noble alim, the noble companion Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, he says that to worship Allah is through tawheed, by being upon Islamic monotheism. Without tawheed, all the actions of worship will be of no benefit. The tawheed that is the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon his servants. وَاعْلَمُوا عِبَادَ اللَّهِ أَنَّكُمْ لَنْ تُتْرَكُوا سُدَى قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَىٰ أَيَحْسَبُ الْإِنسَانُ أَنْ يُتْرَكَ سُدَى We should always remember that we are not created for, for no purpose. But rather we are created for a great purpose as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Qiyamah Does man think that he will be left neglected without being punished? or rewarded for the obligatory duties enjoined by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on him. وَاعْلَمُوا عِبَادَ اللَّهِ أَنَّ الْجَزَاءَ مِنْ جِنْسِ الْعَمَلِ وَأَنَّ الْيَوْمَ عَمَلٌ وَلَا حِسَابٌ وَغَدًا حِسَابٌ وَلَا عَمَلٌ And remember that the rewards on Yawm Al-Qiyamah is according to the deeds that each and every one of us perform while still alive, while still in this dunya. And that today we do a lot of actions. But tomorrow on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, people will be rewarded according to their actions. And therefore no one can act or do anything for himself on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. تَفَكَّرُوا عِبَادَ اللَّهِ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَسُرْعَةِ زَوَالِهَا قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى كُلُّ مَنْ عَلَيْهَا فَانْ وَيَبْقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ الحمد لله as Muslims. And Allah guide us to Al-Islam. This beautiful religion of Al-Islam that command us with all good things for us. Anything that is good except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us with it. And is pleased for us those good things. There is not something that get us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Get us closer to the Jannah except that we are commanded to do it. And there is not a single thing that is bad for us and harmful for us. And therefore keep us away from the Jannah and get us closer to the hellfire except that you find it prohibited for us. And Allah commands us to stay away from it in His book and in the sunnah of His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But why in this dunya? It is not always easy for people to make the right decisions. Some people are consumed by this life. Yes, they want the Jannah, they want to stay away from the hellfire, they want to do good, but then they fail to make the right decisions. One thing is going to help us is to remember this dunya, that it is not lasting, and no one will live in it forever. This dunya and our journey on it is passing quickly. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Ar-Rahman, 
Whatsoever on the earth will perish, and the face of your Lord, full of majesty and honor, will remain forever. Naam ibad Allah. هذه هي الدنيا هذا حالها كل حي فيها يموت وكل قوي فيها يضعف وكل جديد يبلى نعم this is the dunya just in case if you don't know it already and you should know the dunya and how to deal with it and take from it that which is good for you and leave and run away from that which is harmful for you this is the dunya everything alive in it will die Nothing lives forever. And anything we know that is strong in it will turn to become weak. Look at us. When you're created, you're weak. Can't even move. Can't even stand. Can't even feed yourself. Can't even help yourself. Danger come on you, you can't even run. And then now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable you to be strong and strong. Don't go arrogant. Remember where you came from. You were weak. And remember if Allah allow you to live longer, you become weak again. So take advantage of your strength to do more for yourself. You do, and, and remember, you do things for yourself. You're not doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is al-ghani. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stands in no need for the good of his creation. Remember the good things and the new things you see around you that you enjoy, but with the time they become old and become classified. وَالْآيَاتُ عِبَادَ اللَّهِ الْوَارِدَ فِي الْقُرْآنِ الْكَرِيمِ فِي التَّحْذِيرِ مِنَ الْإِغْتِرَارِ بِالدُّنْيَا لَيْسَ فِي التَّحْذِيرِ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا فِي التَّحْذِيرِ مِنَ الْإِغْتِرَارِ بِالدُّنْيَا وَبَيَانِ سُرْعَةِ زَوَالِهَا وَضَرْبِ الْأَمْثَالِ لَهَا كَثِيرَةً As for the ayats in the Quran that warn us against being deceived by this dunya. Doesn't warn us against the dunya itself, for the dunya itself, but for being deceived by it. And the ayats that explain to us the value of this life and how quickly this dunya is moving away. And Allah has said so many examples in the Quran. So this matter of the dunya and how we deal with it, it is not ambiguous for us. It's very clear. So that we can make a decisive decision as related to the dunya and how we look at it. وَقَدْ أَخْبَرَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى عَنْ مَصِيرِ مَنْ قَصُرَ هَمُّهُ عَلَيْهَا وَرَدِيَ بِهَا وَأَرَادَهَا وَحْدَهَا وَأَعْلَدَ عَنِ الْآخِرَةِ in this ayat in the Quran, you find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because He wants good for us. He is the all merciful. He wants us to be on the path that leads to His pleasure. Anything that may bump us of the path, anything that may try to pull us away from the path of Allah, you find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warn us against those things and make it very clear to us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in many ayats mentioned to us the evil end for those who they limit their efforts and their goals for the dunya. That's all they want. They are pleased with it alone and therefore it makes them forget about the hereafter. قال الله سبحانه وتعالى إن الذين لا يرجون لقاءنا وردوا بالحياة الدنيا واطمأنوا بها والذين هم عن آياتنا غافلون أولئك مأواهم النار بما كانوا يكسبون في سورة يونس <coughs> Verily those who hope not for them, their meeting with Allah Those do not hope They don't think about the hereafter they don't long for the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the believer can wait until he stands in front of Allah. The believer prepare himself for that day. But Allah is telling us about other people. Verily those who hope not for their meeting with us but are pleased and satisfied with the life of this present war. And those who are heedless of our proofs those their abode will be the fire because of what they used to earn. وَقَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى مَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا وَزِينَتَهَا 
نوفي إليهم أعمالهم فيها وهم لا يبخسون أولئك الذين ليس لهم في الآخرة إلا النار وحبط ما صنعوا فيها وباطل ما كانوا يعملون Another ayah in Surah Hud Whosoever desires the life of the world and its glitter To them we shall pay in full the wages of their deeds therein And they will have no diminution therein They are those for whom there is nothing in the hereafter but fire and vain are the deeds they did therein, and of no effect is that which they used to do. وفي الصحيحين عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال ما الدنيا في الآخرة إلا كمثل ما يجعل أحدكم إصبعه في اليم فلينظر بما يرجع فلينظر بما يرجع In this hadith that is agreed upon by Imam al-Bukhar Imam Muslim there is a sound and authentic hadith. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa gave us the example of this life, this dunya that so many people are running after it, even though the dunya is running away from them. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa tell us the reality in this hadith of this dunya, and you cannot compare it to the hereafter, with all of the beautiful things in it. With all of the gold and the jewelry and the money. With all of the things that many of us long for. We want more as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says. Even those who have some money they want more. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says the example of this dunya that we live in. As related to the hereafter. As related to what Allah has prepared for the believers. As related to the everlasting entertainment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for the righteous and the good doers. The example of this dunya that for some people, it's that's all they want. With all of the good seeming good in it. All of that good. All of those temptations that keep so many people longing for it. And turn them away from the remembrance of Allah. And make them forget about the reason why they were created. The example of this dunya that so many people want so bad. When you compare it to what Allah has prepared for the righteous. It's like the Prophet says. It's like when one of you submerge his finger to an ocean and take it back. How much do you take from that ocean? Nothing. وفي حديث آخر في صحيح مسلم. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الدنيا سجن المؤمن وجنة الكافر إن صحيح مسلم The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said This dunya is like a jail and a present for the believer And it is paradise for the disbeliever It is the paradise for the disbeliever وعن سهل بن سعد قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لو كانت الدنيا تعدل عند الله جناح بعوضة ما سقى كافرا منها شربة ماء This hadith that is correct by Imam al-Tirmidhi and the Imam al-Albani authenticated it The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said on the authority of سهل بن سعد رضي الله عنه The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said If this dunya worth with Allah سبحانه وتعالى If the value of this dunya not a nice house and a mansion. Not a whole neighborhood, ya akhwan. Talking about the whole dunya and what's in it. This entire life. This present worldly life. And what's in it. Because some of us, we just drive and we see a nice house. And we're like, subhanallah. Some people pull over and just look at the house. For, a, for, a, for, a, for an hour. Uh, being amazed. What about the whole dunya? What about all of what's in it? The Prophet ﷺ says, if the entire dunya, its value with Allah, worth the wing of a mosquito, a mosquito, yaqwan, Allah will not give the disbeliever a sip of water from it. Naam ibad Allah, katab al Hasan al Basri, Imam al Tabi'een. رحمه الله إلى عمر بن عبد العزيز أمير المؤمنين فقال أما بعد فإن الدنيا دار ضعن وليست بدار مقام 
وإنما أنزل إليها آدم عقوبة فاحذرها يا أمير المؤمنين فإن الزاد منها تركها والغنى فيها فقرها تذل من أعزها وتفقر من جمعها كالسم يأكله من لا يعرفه وهو حتفه One of the great scholars the great imams of التابعين one of those generations that the Prophet ﷺ said they are the best generation. The Sahaba and the Tabi'oon and the Tabi'oon. And they are the example for us. And they are our Salaf that we have to emulate their example. We have to learn what they were upon and act upon it. Because Allah chose them. And Allah is pleased with them. This great Imam Al-Hasan Al-Basri rahimahullah, he wrote an advice and nasiha to the ruler at that time. To that just ruler of the believers of the Muslims at the time, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, he wrote to him and he says, Indeed, this life is nothing but a journey. It's nothing but a journey. And once you leave it, you will never come back. It's one way ticket. It's one way trip. You ain't coming back for it. So therefore, Remember he said to him that Adam was sent to it to the dunya as a punishment. Naam. So be aware of it, O Amir al Mu'mineen. If you really want to take to get the best of this dunya while in this dunya, leave it. Don't run after it. Because he says, if somebody wants he look at to be rich. If somebody thinks that the definitions of being rich by running after the dunya, that person will be corrupt. And he will be bankrupt from the real things that will help him on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. If someone seek might in the dunya, he will be humiliated on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Those who run after it, they're not rich. Those who spend so much of their time gathering this dunya, they are the real poor because it turns them away from the hereafter. Naam, he says, the sweetness of this dunya that turns the people away from the remembrance of Allah is like someone who is eating a poison and a nice cake. Something that is sweet, but they put the poison in it. He wants more for it, but thinking that he's enjoying it, but actually it's getting him closer to his death. Qala Sheikh Salih al-Fawzan, hafizahullah. انظر بارك الله فيك انظر بارك الله فيك كيف ناصح هذا الإمام العالم بكتاب الله وسنة نبي الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كيف ناصح أميره أمير المؤمنين ولم يدعو عليه ولم يكفره من فوق المنابر كما يفعل الخوارج وفراخهم في كل زمان ومكان أو نوب الشيخ الدكتور العلامة بقية السلف صالح الفوزان حفظه الله when he brought this Athar of this great Imam, he says, I want you to pay attention that see how this great Imam Al Hassan Al Basri has given this advice to his ruler. Why? Because he has knowledge of the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah. That's why he dealt with his ruler with this way, writing for him a sincere advice just between him and him. Unlike the Khawarij. Of all times and the Khawarij of our present times because they are bankrupt when it comes to the correct understanding of the Quran and the Sunnah. They make dua from the minbar on the rulers and they incite the people to go and protest in the streets against the rulers and they declare the Muslim rulers to be disbelievers. Follow on their desires. This is the way of the Khawarij. And all of those who follow them, and they are exist, they exist in our times. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين 
وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ولي المتقين وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد عباد الله ليعلم أن ذم الدنيا لا ينصرف إلى ما خلق الله فيها من المنافع والمآكل والمشارب والأموال وإنما ينصرف الذم والوعيد إلى تصرفات بني آدم فيها نعم Now when we're talking about be aware of the dunya That this dunya is despised It is not because of what Allah has put from all of the good What is blameworthy is not the dunya itself Most definitely that which Allah has subhanahu wa ta'ala Put from the good for his servant This thing is not blameworthy Naam Allah has put in the dunya Many good things for us That we cannot live without The food we 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 supposed to eat and the water we drink, the clothing, the the dwellings we live in, the businesses and the money that we supposed to make to support our families and ourselves. But rather, what is blameworthy in it is that when the people they take the dunya as their main goal and turn them away from the hereafter. What is blameworthy is the tasarrufat is the actions and the behavior of the people in this dunya. فَمَنْ إِفْتَخَرَ بِهَا وَأُعْجِبَ بِهَا وَشَغَلَتُهُ عَنْ طَاعَةِ اللَّهِ وَأَنْسَتُهُ الْآخِرَ فَهَذَا هُوَ الْمَذْمُومِ الْمُعَاقَبِ So therefore, the one who is proud and arrogant, the one who is so amazed with this dunya, in a manner that he keep him away from obedience to Allah, keep him away from performing the obligations, and make him to forget about that. This man, he forget about that. Like he's not going to die. Forget about the hereafter and standing in front of Allah. This is the blameworthy person. And this is the one who these ayats and this ahadith that entails the punishment of Allah applies on such a person. An example from the Quran, the people of Had. When the Prophet of Allah remind them to be afraid of Allah, of the punishment of Allah, because they grow arrogant and they become tyrant, they forget about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is their answer? They فَاسْتَكْبَرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ بِغَيْرِ الْحَقِّ وَقَالُوا مَنْ أَشَدُّ مِنَّا قُوَّةِ Allah tells us that the people of Ad, they were arrogant in the land without right. And they said, who is mightier than us in strength? Another example is the example of the Pharaoh, Fir'aun. When the Prophet of Allah, Musa salam, warned him against the punishment of Allah, what was his answer? قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ أَلَيْسَ لِي مُلْكُ مِسْرَى وَهَذِهِ الْأَنْهَارُ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِي أَفَلَا تُبْسِرُونَ And the Pharaoh proclaimed among his people saying, O oh my people, is not mine the dominion of Egypt and these, these rivers flowing underneath me. Do you not see? Likewise, another example in the Quran, the example of Qarun, Kura. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him this dunya, a lot of treasures, they said to him as a reminder, the people said to him as a reminder, as Allah tells us in the Quran, إِذْ قَالَ لَهُ قَوْمُهُ لَا تَفْرَحْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْفَرِحِينَ وَابْتَغِ فِي مَا آتَاكَ اللَّهُ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَ وَلَا تَنْسَ نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا وَأَحْسِنْ كَمَا أَحْسَنَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْكَ وَلَا تَبْغِ الْفَسَادَ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُفْسِدِينَ مَاذَا كَانَ جَوَابُهُ قال إنما أوتيته على علم عندي لم يشكر الله ولم يذكر نعمة الله and remember when Qarun's people said to him do not exalt with riches being ungrateful to Allah verily Allah likes not those who exalt with riches and being ungrateful to him subhanahu wa ta'ala but seek with what Allah has subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed on you that wealth that Allah has bestowed on you what do you do with it? Seek with it the home of the hereafter. And forget not your portion of lawful enjoyment in this world. And do good as Allah has been good to you. And seek not mischief in the land. Verily Allah does not like the mufsidun. Those who commit great crimes and sins and oppression. Those who are tyrants. The mischief makers and the corrupts and the like. What would his answer? You would think when the advice comes to a believer. will say Jazakumullah khairan. Naam. This business of mine was taking me away. As the business is taking certain people away from their families. Some people are running and ripping like they say, trying to get more money. 
at the expense of neglecting their children. So now when children become teenagers and lost in the streets, they know no aqidah, they don't know no Allah, nothing about Allah. Now that person he will regret, he will try to find a solution. This dunya has come between families, destroyed families. When a man neglects his family, he's looking for the dunya. Or when you find a woman herself, she wants to go out and make her own money. Where are the children going to go? Of course, to the daycare, who don't care. Go to the babysitters. They don't care. It's Muslim babysitters, non-Muslim, uh, on the sunnah, not on the sunnah, righteous or not. Why? Because the man and the woman, they so into this dunya. They want to build something. They want to get more than the neighbors. And they forget about the real buildings that they should build. That family upon the taqwa of Allah. They build the aqidah of those children. You find a woman, yet let's say she doesn't work. She stay home, but she giving a hard time to her husband. Whenever she visit and see other sisters and, the, and, and what they have, and that's what Allah has given them. Now she want to give her husband a hard time. Until he go out of the path of Allah to sink himself in the dunya to please the ladies. We want to say to both fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make the life of the hereafter be your goal. Take from this dunya whatever you can to stay on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam, what the answer of Qarun was? He says this has been given to me only because of the knowledge of possess. نعم عباد الله كثير من الناس شغلتهم الدنيا اليوم many people ما شاء الله the dunya take them away from the masjid take them away from the Quran the dunya take them away from the remembrance of Allah the dunya take them away from being nice and kind to their parents the dunya take them away from knowledge the dunya remove them totally of the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala People giving themselves from this dunya, taking whatever it comes to them. They don't ask, is this is pleasing to Allah? Now they just want it because of the dunya. They don't ask this simple question. Is this action, this transaction, this contract I'm about to sign, is it for me? Is it going to help me? Is it going to increase me in taqwa? Is it going to be for me in this, in, when I stand in front of Allah? Or is it going to be against me? And you know the answer. If it's going to be against you, leave it alone. If it's going to be for you, go and do it, insha'Allah ta'ala. Ibadallah. Many are the things we, we want to bring, but as we have to respect the time, many things, but we leave it as a homework, open homework for all of us. Let us, when we read the book of Allah, let us be mindful when we read the ayats that talk about the dunya and talk about the hereafter. Let us be mindful. Take a notebook, write those ayats on the side. Find what the ulama of tafsir said about them. Because it is my life and yours. It is a journey. We're on this dunya. We're on a journey. Barakallahu feekum. Asalullah li wa lakum uthabata ala deen. Ya hayu ya qayyum wa rahmanu ya rahim. Nas'aluka bi annaka anta allahu samadu an tuwafiqana al khayra wa tusaddid a'malana wa aqwalana. Allahumma arzuqna al fiqha fi deenik. Wa al fahma sahiha li kitabik wa tibai sunnati nabiyik ala hadi salafi salih. Wa arda allahumma an al-sahaba al-kiram. والتابعين لهم بإحسان اللهم أصلح ولاة أمور المسلمين ووفقهم لما فيه خير الدين دنيا والدين واحفظنا اللهم في عوراتنا وآمنا في روعاتنا إنك على كل شيء قدير وصلى الله وسلم على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا